Hello, lovely YouTube family. Welcome back to 10 Focus. In today's video, we are going to talk about Samsung versus Apple. Which is bigger? Company Comparison 2021. Before we start, I would want you to hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss out on any of our videos. Which company makes a better phone? What I have done, along with my Jason Squared colleague Jason Cipriani and several other ZDNet writers, is try to boil this comparison down to 10 KPIs and score the two companies based on how they perform on those performance indicators along a 10-point scale. A perfect score would be 10 points for each indicator with a total score of 100, which none received. For additional context, we also scored Google. User experience, Apple 7, Samsung 7, tie. We could argue about this all day long because it is a highly subjective topic. Both Cipriani and I prefer iOS. Objectively, however, Samsung has made significant improvements with One UI 3.0. However, if we track the development of both mobile operating systems over the last several years, it feels a lot like Android and iOS are becoming very similar platforms from a user experience perspective. For that reason, we rank them dead even in terms of UX. 7. Because while they are both excellent user experiences, I think they also could use some considerable improvement in several areas. They are both getting long in the tooth iOS is a good user experience, but many areas need redesign or optimization. Samsung does an excellent job with taking raw Android and improving it with their value-added stuff. As it is implemented on the Pixel with Google's platform enhancements, pure Android gets a 6. Industrial Design and Product Durability – Apple, 9, Samsung, 9, a tie. Yes, design is yet again a personal preference. Jason Cipriani doesn't care for how big Samsung is going with the S21 Note 20 line. If you want a smaller phone in Samsung's lineup, the company removed some features from the larger devices. On the other hand, Apple launched four different iPhone 12 models, all of which have the same basic features except the larger sensor on the 12 Pro and IBIS stabilized main camera sensor on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Nevertheless, both Apple and Samsung have some of the best product designs in the entire industry, so they both get very high marks. Both are ranked a 9 in this area. Historically, I would say both of these companies scored relatively low in terms of product durability. That's why I have housed these things in otter boxes for so long. But in recent years, Apple and Samsung have upgraded their phones to IP67 and IP68 ratings to make them waterproof and much improved glass tensile strength so I would say their products are much more durable. However, I'm still using cases until someone proves to me that they are indestructible. ZDNet recommends Apple, 9, Samsung, 8. There is no denying it. Apple's A14 Bionic is way ahead of Samsung on overall chip performance and on benchmarks performed at the end of last year using the Qualcomm 865 Plus on the S20. It trounced it in every conceivable area that was quantifiable. However, right now, for S21 devices in the North American market, Samsung uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 SoCs that are faster in some raw benchmark areas than the A14, such as memory bandwidth. It also integrates 5G on the die. In contrast, the A14 Bionic is paired with an older X55 modem chip made by Qualcomm and has to go through interconnects for its data communications pipeline. Apple is a year behind Samsung in 5G systems integration, there's no getting around that. In terms of CPU core performance, the Snapdragon 888 is an octa-core, whereas the A14 Bionic is a hexa-core. They both have cores that clock out at similar speeds at a max of about 3 GHz. The A14 Bionic has more Tier 3 cache, 8 MB versus the Snapdragon's 4 MB. But we have to remember that the A14 Bionic also has 16 specialized machine learning cores for doing advanced computational photography and computer vision, and it also sports four powerful graphics cores. Apple highly optimizes its chips for its platform. Apple doesn't go on the open market and source the designs from other semiconductor vendors like Samsung is doing. Where Samsung takes the lead right now is in displays, because this is where they have chosen to put a lot of its R&D efforts and it maintains the world's second-largest display manufacturing business. The company's flagship phones sport 120Hz AMOLEDs with adaptive refresh, a technology that is not yet present on iPhone models. However, high-frequency adaptive refresh screens do consume a lot more power, which is why the S21 sports a much higher capacity battery, 4000 versus the iPhone 12's 2800. 
That could explain why Cupertino has not yet chosen to source these components from Samsung or LG for its own products. The company also manufactures folding displays, which are used on its most expensive Galaxy Z line of devices. So while Samsung's smartphones might have higher performance on paper in some areas, Apple's current iPhone's real-world performance, with the mix of applications consumers and businesses use on a day-to-day -day basis, often perform faster than Samsung's current generation phones. And that is because Android is just plain more resource-intensive than iOS is. For that reason, Apple gets a 9 and Samsung gets an 8. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss any amazing videos from us.